Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to a new video series called Simple C++. So in this series, we're going to be looking at the basics of writing and understanding modern C++. Now, what exactly is C++? It is a compiled language that is statically typed. Now, by a compiled language, we mean that before we can actually execute our C++ code, it has to be translated into something um, our underlying processor understands. And that's done through a piece of system software called a compiler. So that will generate, uh, say, x86 instructions for an x86 processor, ARM instructions for an ARM processor, or say RISC-V instructions for a RISC-V processor. Now, the other side of that is being statically typed. Now, all of the uh, piece of data inside of our programs have uh, an associated type, and this type has to be known to our compiler at compile time, and it's fixed, right? It's static. Now, our compiler uses this information in a few different ways. So, for example, it uses this information about types to generate the correct code. So it'll generate, say, an integer add instruction for the addition of two integers, or it'll generate code for string concatenation if we're adding um, two strings together. It also uses the, this uh, type information to make sure that we're using our types in a valid way. So while you know adding two integers might be supported and adding two strings might be supported, adding a string and an integer together might be completely invalid and not supported by those types with that operator. Now, another thing that compilers use this type information for is dealing with memory. All of these types can have different memory footprints. Something might be one bytes or four bytes or five bytes or 300 bytes. And our compiler needs to know about this in order to generate correct code. So what exactly are we going to be looking at in this first example, in this first video in this series? So we're going to be looking at the core of every C and C++ program, which is this thing called a main function. And for writing and running our code, we're going to be using this great online tool called Compiler Explorer. So what makes this you know, so great is that we no longer have to worry about you know, people having uh, you know, different operating systems, different compilers, or different versions of the same compiler. We can control for all of those things and select exactly which compiler we want to use. So for this first example, we're going to be using this x86-64 version of GCC, and the version of GCC is going to be 14.2. The other nice thing about using Compiler Explorer is that we can directly share links to these examples that will be posted below the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly is this thing called a main function? So if we take a look at cppreference.com, which is the gold standard for C++ reference material, we can see that it has a whole article on the main function. So it says that, the, that a program shall contain a global function named main, which is the designated start of the program. So all this is really saying is that all of our programs need a function called main because that's logically where we're going to begin execution. And it gives us a few different forms that we can use, right? A very basic form that has an integer as a return type. So that's usually the return code for a program, basically whether or not it completed successfully. It doesn't take any inputs here. It's called main. And then it has some function body where we can put um, the code we actually want to run. There's also a second form here that you may see in some examples that takes some inputs and another that it says is implementation defined, right? This is probably not one we're going to see very often. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can write uh, our own main function and exactly what happens uh, when we run it and see you know, maybe how we can play around with it. So to do this, we'll go ahead and create a uh, function called main with uh, no inputs here and a function body. And we'll go ahead and put return zero in there, right? Zero typically meaning that um, our program completed successfully. And if we take a look at the right hand side, you can see our program was automatically compiled and ran. We didn't add any extra compile options in this case. And it says the program returned zero, right? Which is exactly what we put here, return zero. Now, another special thing about main is that it's the only function where we can leave off this return statement when we have, say, a return type like int. It will by default say return zero. So if we just get the return zero here, you can see it compiles and it runs again, and it says that the program returns zero still. Now, this return zero, like I said, is typically used as a um, an error code, right? Zero meaning we had no errors and different 
you know, whole numbers, meaning, uh, you know, say which error we actually hit. Um, so there's nothing special about zero in terms of what it's really doing. Um, we can add, say, a, another number here, say two, and you can see that our program will start returning, you know, whatever that number is, say program return two. Okay, so that's kind of the basic, uh, the most simple C++ program that we can write. It's just a main function. It doesn't really do anything except, you know, go into our, you know, starting point for a program and immediately return. So we'll look at how we can expand on this in later videos and eventually how we can write our own functions, right? That have our own, say, inputs and return types. So that's going to go ahead and go you know, do it for this video. I'll put links down to this example and also this documentation for the main uh, function below the video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.